Hey guys, John here. So today's video is going to be slightly different than usual. I wanted to share with you a really cool way to learn new techniques with the tools that you already have and the presets that you have. So in this video, we're going to be featuring Avenger 2, and it's going to be a really, really cool acid lead that I think we should learn how to make. So for example, let's go here to Bitwig and let's get started. So if you haven't listened to the expansions that come with Avenger 2, they're pretty crazy, especially down here on the Factory 2 library. So if we open this up, we can go to Factory 2, and then under the sequences category, this one right here, sequence driving techno two. So this is one preset and here we go. It sounds something like this. Okay, so pretty insane for one preset. There's a lot going on here, but one thing I wanted to share with you guys is how cool this acid lead sounds. <laughs> Now, some of these macros are pretty cool as well, right? We have the accent one and the saw, saw pulse. But one thing that I really want to kind of go through with you guys is learning how to deconstruct these sounds and be able to make it yourself. So with that being said, if we look at this acid one, this is going to be this four, it was a one, two, three, four, the fifth oscillator down here. And what's cool is we can just solo this right here. So anything that we play is only going to trigger the, uh, the acid sound. <laughs> So one thing that we can do is let's click over here to see what this is actually doing here. And if we play some sounds, we see that we have this saw wave, but it's not really exactly a saw once we press it. We have this down over here kind of going on. And then it's going to this ARP3. And if we right click this, it's going to take us right to here. So we see here's all these notes that this is going through as well. This goes to pitch two as well. So we right click that and we can see that this is on mode legato. Okay, cool. Got it. It's going to filter three, which is using the analog pass 24. And then this is going to out effects three, which is this whole bank. And this is something that I think we should concentrate on today. So with that being said, let's start kind of building this by learning what the sound designer did for this patch, because a lot of the times we think we know a lot of different techniques, but once we put things into practice, then we start learning how different sounds are made. And this isn't essentially to just copy values to the next one, it's to learn what these things do once we start adding them to our sound. So once we find something that we like in our presets, and then we start learning how to make it, maybe on later on in the future, we can bring out that technique or save a rack or something like that, and then bring it to the sounds that we make, making our sound design much better. So with that being said, let's kind of dive into this. So first thing, let's go to a brand new patch here. And just for sakes, let me get my face out of here so we, I don't cover anything up here. Okay, so we basically have a Blink slate right here. Nothing too crazy. So one of the first things I kind of looked at here to recreate this sound is if we look at the uh, at the editor, we can kind of change our saw wave just a little bit. Maybe something kind of like that. Okay. So we have this kind of basic saw wave, and maybe we want to put an ARP on it for now to kind of get the acid vibe. So we can turn on the ARP one. So we have that kind of going. So if we go to our ARP and then maybe we can hold down shift and then select all of these and then maybe bring these out just like that. We have something to kind of work with right here. And then also in the pinch category, we need to change this to a mono legato. That's fine. That's going to come in handy a little bit later. Okay, so now once we go back to this main patch, okay, so we did an ARP, we did the picture, we did the, or we have to go to the filter next, so let's look at this filter, so we're using the Anna Low Pass 24, by default we're on the 12, so we can go to the, uh, where are we, Low Pass 24, we can go down here, and then bring this down a little bit. Give us some envelope, some resonance. Now the point of this isn't to just exactly copy every value, but to kind of create this I guess in tandem with this and kind of create our own results from this. 
Maybe a little bit of drive. Okay, so that's pretty cool. Okay. So this one as well is already going to amp three. So let's take a look at this guy. So we have no sustain, so we don't need any sustain there. And then the decay has a little bit of curve if we see that there, and it's kind of more down towards the bottom. So we can right click and add the curve. And kind of get it to where we want to. Okay. So we have something kind of basic to work with. Now, a lot of the stuff in this patch, if we go and target this guy right over here and kind of listen to see what's going on. Okay, it sounds really cool, right? So what happens if we go to the uh, the effects and then we bypass everything? So that's what we have, right? So what we need to do is turn these on and kind of turn these all off and then start going through these one by one and seeing exactly what this does to the sound. So in our one over here, one thing we do need to change is we need to drop this down by an octave so we can bring this down to negative 12. There we go. Okay, so if we look at this guy, we can see that we have first an EQ. So we turn this on and then we can look here and we're really just high passing this, right? So don't necessarily go for the exact value, but kind of just look what this is doing. So we go to this guy here and then we are on effects one. We don't need to necessarily be on three, but anyway, we can right click this here and then we have to add an equalizer. Pretty simple, right? So we can open this guy up and then for the type, we can right click this here and go to high pass and then maybe bring down that resonance there and kind of just put it to where we'd like it. Maybe something like that, that might be fine. And let's bring up our volume just a little bit here. First step is done. It's not too hard, right? This is pretty uh, pretty simple. So the next one is going to be this distortion, right? And if we turn this guy on and we take a listen to this here. So first we have the EQ now, EQ, and we have the distortion. Okay, well now we're starting to get somewhere. Okay, so now we add the distortion for this guy. So we can click here or right click here and then we go and add a distortion because that's, that's, kind of a, that's kind of a big part of this sound, right? We have the filter, the resonance, the modulation, and then the distortion is a huge part of a type of sound like this. So add this, add this distortion. And if we look at some of these values to kind of just eyeball and see what's going on here, really not a lot has changed, right? A lot of these values are going to be default, right? So that's gonna be okay. So let's play a note. So this is our guy here. Okay, so we have something here and maybe we have a little bit too much low end so we can always just bring this a little bit in. Something like that maybe. Okay, so we have our distortion. Cool. So what's the next thing that's kind of going on here? So we have this phaser and when I was rebuilding this, I was like, this is kind of cool, but I don't really need this. You can add this if you'd like to, but I didn't feel like this was very much needed. So we're going to skip this one for now. So this next one is actually really cool, right? So if we bring this up here a little bit, this expander is actually very interesting. So let's go ahead and target this guy. So let's go ahead and click click on this guy and then let's go add that for the one we have here. So let's right click this here and then add the expander, which is on the right hand side. And then the difference is here is this one is going to be about 600 something. Nothing too crazy on that one. Okay, so next up we have this multiband distortion. Now this one makes a huge difference, right? So. So let's click on here and then let's start adding this to our guy. So right click here and then we're going to add the multiband distortion, which is under the distortion category. So we can see if we kind of bring this here a little bit to the left, that we have low distortion, high distortion, and then mid down here in the center. So this one here, let's bring this first guy up just a little bit like that. And then for the lows, we can bring this, what, 27 something. Now again, the point of this is to see what they did and kind of learn from that. So this is what, 25, 27, that's fine. And then we have this mid here around the 20s. And then bring the high up to somewhere in the 30s. It starts to make it a little bit more aggressive. And then next up we have a reverb, so we can right click this here and add a reverb. 
Now for this, we can bring down the pre-delay and then maybe, let's see, let's go to this guy here and turn this guy on. So a lot of the differences, if we look here with some pre-delay, maybe less of the modulate, something kind of like that. Maybe some of the filter. And the mix is pretty close because default's 15, this is 12. Really depends on how you want to do that. Okay, so we have something like that. And then we have a multiband limiter. So let's go ahead and add that as well. So we can right click this here and then add our multiband limiter down over here. And then here, here's some lows and then switching some highs. So if you look at the threshold, maybe negative 14 or so. And added some post gain to that as well. And then we have down here this mini chain, which we technically don't need for this patch. So for the most part, we have this kind of sound. Now, it's good to learn to see how all this is put together. So now we have something close, an approximation of what was made over here. So we have something kind of like that, and maybe over on the master, or even maybe, I guess that might be fine. We could even add a compressor. We could have done it in the effects rack as well. It doesn't really matter too much. So if we have our own kick drum right over here, if we play this. There's always that sweet spot that you can find with the envelope. So depending on how much we want to modulate the filter, where the filter cutoff is going to be, and how much resonance and maybe some drive that we add. So we have something like that. So let's say that we like this effect rack that we made ourselves based upon what we saw here in this preset. And once we have everything kind of put together, we can tweak things to our liking. And then we can save this rack if we want to. We can click this here and then save this rack for whatever we want later. So depending on what we put into this effects rack, we can have this, I guess we can have this thing called like an acid rack or a 303 rack or really whatever you want it to be called. <laughs> So we have that now if we go here into the ARP, right? So let's say we want to make something interesting here. Maybe we can connect some of these notes so we can bring this like that. Or maybe do some slides like that. Here's going to be the spot where you can just play till your heart's content because we have the sound for the most part already done. Also, what's really cool in Adventure, you can click this list here and there's all sorts of cool different presets that you can go for. So we have Porta Legato 303, which is kind of interesting. <laughs> Which that one's actually pretty cool as well. So 
while this preset is very cool, there's a lot of stuff to learn from, we have just dived into just one of these oscillators, one of the effects rack, and then made something completely different with a different sequence, maybe a similar sound, but more personalized to what we're doing. And we learn a lot on the way. So this is a cool technique that I have learned so much from like there's there's really interesting patches in any synthesizer out there so that should definitely be your homework for the day is find a patch that uh that you really like inside your synth and then bring up a fresh copy right next to it and kind of turn off the effects and kind of first see what's the waveform doing is the waveform uh, a saw is it a square is it maybe a sample or something like that and figure out a way to get that inside <clears throat> of your new synth or the new instance, and then really start to go from there and start adding one by one. And you're going to be surprised how much you learn in this process and how these different orders of effects and different filters, filter modulation can really affect your sound. So once you have something kind of basically set up like this here, depending on the sequence that I would program in this in here, I could totally use this as a 303. It sounds pretty good. I mean, we didn't even do too much to this, but yeah, long story short, find a patch that you like and then recreate some certain concepts of it. It doesn't have to be the entire patch, but just so you can get something from that. And you're going to be surprised how many different techniques there are out there that some really good sound designers have done that you can learn from and then start implementing that in your own way. <clears throat> so that being said, try to do this. This is your homework. And if this is something that you guys are interested in and kind of learning how to deconstruct patches, especially with Avenger 2, please let me know and maybe we can make some more of these. So thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned something and try to recreate something yourself. See you in the next one.